2 Timothy.
But we do know there's parts of it we agree with. But then we hear there's other parts people will say different things about. And well, that kind of makes a little sense. Maybe, well, I'm not real sure what God's saying in that area. Maybe He meant that back then, but not now. That's not what it says. It says all Scripture is inspired by God. And God doesn't change. God is the same today as He was the day He spoke the world into being. Last year, the day after the Super Bowl, every team started working together to go to the next Super Bowl. Coaches started making decisions with one goal in mind. And the funny thing is, that as a team, everybody wants to be on that same page. The coach wants people to buy into what he's telling them. They'll do it his way. And if there's players that cause a problem, they want to get rid of them. They don't want them. But we as Christians have been told to accept everything. That we're bigoted if we don't. That we're foolish. But I see the only thing that gives us the truth of God's Word is God's Word. Turn over to Genesis. This is the beginning of God's Word. This is the very start. Of God's Word. All Scripture is inspired by God. The reason God gave us this was so that we could know what happened at the beginning. So that all we had to do was look at His Word. There was only one that was there at the time. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one that was there. We don't understand that totally, but we accept it in Scripture. But you have to accept everything God says. The creation happened the way God said it happened because He's the one that did it. Any scientist that says different, anybody who teaches different than God created it is wrong. Or all of God's Word is wrong. If you can't believe the first chapter, then throw the whole book out. Because that's all it's become to you is a book. This is God's inspired word. And it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. 
It doesn't say and there was a million evenings and a million mornings and we got by the first time. No, it says there was evening and there was morning. God created the world in six days. He didn't create it through evolution. Evolution is against the Word of God. He did not create the world through evolution. It is not compatible to the Word of God. Because death did not come into the world till man sinned, so man can't be a million years down the road or ten million years down the road. Because if they're saying that, then they're saying God's a liar. And if they're saying God's a liar, they're wrong because all Scripture is inspired by God. And you have to make a decision. Are you going to believe what the world tells you or are you going to believe what God tells you? Because it will affect every other area of your life. It will affect your whole walk with the world. It starts at the beginning. You've got to believe it all. Because if you don't have the beginning, you don't have any understanding of why you would need a Savior. The Jews, when Paul spoke to the Jews and shared the gospel with them, he knew they had the history of the Old Testament and they believed. And so they knew about man's fall. You've heard about the fall of man. It's in the Bible. It's in the book of Genesis. And they knew about that. And so they believed it. And so Paul shares with them about the fall of man. Or I mean, Paul didn't have to share about him with the fall of man. Because he already knew about it. They knew they needed a Savior. And they were looking for a Savior. But then you look a little farther along the Acts, and he ends up talking to some Greeks. And the problem was, these Greeks, they didn't know about the creation of the world. They didn't know about the fall of man. And they said, Paul, this talk is foolishness. It makes no sense. Because they didn't know about the beginning. What man had done at the beginning. Do you know what man did at the beginning? They say in the United States today, over 90% of the youth believe the world was made by evolution. Some of them believe God created it through evolution. Some of them believe it happened out of the Big Bang Theory. Some of them don't have any idea how it happened. But they just accept that that's what it's supposed to be because they've heard it constantly on TV. They've heard it constantly in the radios. Constantly in the newspaper. But God said He did it in six days. When He said there was morning and there was evening, how do you even take that out of there? And say that must have been a million years. If you put death before the fall of man, then there is no need for a Savior. Because God's Word isn't true if you believe in creation or believe in evolution and not creation. The world today that we live in is turning away from God because Satan is not the foundation out of Christianity. Because he's taken kids away from believing what Genesis has to say about what God created. This week, each and every one of you start reading in the book of Genesis. Read the first four chapters of Genesis. And we're going to see 
where God wants to take you. Because it's funny. Some people are for the Patriots, some are for the Rams, some don't care. But when you ask questions about the creation, you get many Christians that aren't sure. That'll question it. That won't take a stand in the public arena. They're afraid to say what might happen if they stand up for what's being told out there. I stand on the Word of God. Each and every Christian needs to be standing on what God's Word has to say and believe it 100%. Because God says all Scripture, all Scripture, is inspired by God. Over in Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Are you willing to find out what God has to say? Because man will tell you constantly what he has to say. The world will tell you constantly what it has to say. There's little hints all through the media. You can't go on the internet. You can't go on TV. You can't read a newspaper without being a mention. With the world being billions of years old. Of evolution. Of what man has to teach. But are you willing to take what God has given you? The God that created the world. Are you willing to challenge yourself to start seeing what He has to say about it? And to seek to let others know, to take a stand firm, or firm stand against whoever says anything against God's Word. And by against God's Word, if they're saying God's Word's wrong, they're talking against it. You can't have it both ways. You either believe it all, or you throw it all out. You can't have it both ways in your life. You can't have it both ways in your family. You can't have it both ways with raising your kids. Life's not always easy. You will be persecuted. That's what the book said there in Timothy. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. If you stand up for what God's Word has to say in the book of Genesis, and it's not just about the creation. There's many other things that are brought into there. What God believes is family. About the fall of man. About why women have pain in childbearing. It's there in the start. 
of Genesis. Are we going to build our faith on what God has to say or are you going to build it on what the world tells you? Because if you want to stop struggling in life and start living the life God has for you, then you've got to give your foundation to build right and then nobody can move you off of it because you will know what you believe. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, your word is so powerful. Nobody has ever proved it wrong. Not one. Many men have come and gone who have tried to say things against your word, who have tried to teach things that your word does not teach. And they will all face the grave and face judgment. But your word does not change. Help us to not be conformed to the world. Help us to live with believing that all of your word is inspired by you. And as such, we should live as such. You tell us you created this world in six days. Let us believe it the way you wrote it, not the way man wrote it. Help us to live our lives the way you ask us to, not the way man asks us to. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Everybody rise on your feet for the final hymn.